Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio Awesome. I'm Ryan. And I'm Katie. And today we'll be looking at Rise of Molech by Simon. Rise of Moloch is a one versus many tactical miniatures game for two to five players. It's set in a world that is a little bit mysterious. You have this like elder god who is Molech, and he's got these like crazy priests, cultist style um, people who are trying to bring him back. And so there's the bad guy who is going to be controlling all of these cultists. And then you'll have the other players playing as the good guys who are trying to prevent this. Let's take a look at some of the components and the gameplay. Being a Simon game, there are a lot of great components. The enemy miniatures are controlled by the nemesis player. They consist of agents and minions. Minions are weaker and only have one health, and they only get to take one action each turn. The agents, however, get their own turn each, have more health, and get to take two actions on their turns. The other players, on the other hand, are playing as the Unicorn Club, which is a collection of unique players with different abilities. Each of these abilities really add to the flavor of the team. Also, each character has a unique card that gives you the background of each of these characters, which are very interesting in their own right. The game comes with a campaign book that shows you how to set up each scenario. Scenarios will be set up differently depending on whether you're going to play campaign mode and play one scenario after another, or if you're going to just do a one-shot. During the game, players have a chance to pick up arsenal cards. Each card will show you the range and the special abilities that that card might have and what the ether cost would be to use those abilities. Each of these arsenals take up a space in your arsenal area. In addition to his units, the nemesis player has nemesis power cards that he can use at least once around. He always starts with at least two basic power cards. The one allows him to have an additional activation for two of his minions and the other gives him the ability to buy chaos cards. Chaos cards are one-off abilities that he will use and then discard. Turn order is determined by cards. Each player will choose which ones they want to take their actions first in the rounds. The so Unicorn Club chooses all of theirs and the Nemesis player chooses all of theirs, revealing one at a time each taking that activation. Most of the actions on your turn will be used to move and attack. To attack, you roll dice and try to get specific symbols in order to hit, and the defender rolls dice in response to dodge. Another action you can take are special actions, which may cost ether, and all that ether has to be given to the nemesis player. And the game ends when one side or the other meets that scenario's objectives. Also, depending on whether the good guys lost or won will change the next part of the campaign. So you have to really watch those wins and losses. I really liked how you could either play the scenario objectives by themselves or link them all together in a campaign. And I liked that there was something that happens between each scenario of the campaign where you kind of go to different locations in London uh, to try to prepare yourself for the next scenario. And I that really appeals to me, the whole idea of a campaign and uh, gradually gaining power. Yeah, I also think that's really neat. That you, you're able to upgrade your characters. They're able to like pull in these new abilities that you have to try to use. also really like the balance of where the good guys are choosing to spend ether to do really neat things, but when they spend it, they're handing it off to the bad guys and I, I really like that that push and pull there like if I do this awesome thing am I giving him an even better thing I don't know yeah so and I think that's interesting when you're doing the intermediate part between scenarios and the the gentlemen are visiting the different locations depending on what location they visit that also gives an equivalent amount of power to the nemesis as well so there's even balance there 
Plus, the artwork for this game was just really cool and kind of creepy. Oh, definitely creepy. It it has that that feel of um, you know like the cultist and like there's zombies and there's just oh the bad guys are just so gross. <laughs> so this game is set in the world of smog, um, and they have a couple of of games in that. So I think it's on Her Majesty's service, and maybe it is just this other one, um, but it definitely has the same like feel as on Her Majesty's service as far as the the art and the creepiness and just the mysteriousness of the setting um, as opposed to the gameplay. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what other games might come forth in this world because it's definitely worth seeing how much deeper it can get. Uh, Tantrum House gives Rise of Moloch two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up.